I'm on my phone. So. There you go. Thank you. All okay. right, then. Well, grace and peace. This is Laverne. Grace and peace. All oh. So on online right now, I heard Sister Laverne, uh, Sister Levon, I think I heard Kia, I, and all those who else is online. I appreciate you being online this evening. Thank you for that prayer, Sister Laverne. Uh, grace and peace to all of you. Grace and peace to all the guests who may be on their lines and their families. I, I pray all is well with you and your families. I pray the Lord is blessing you and keeping you while you're going through whatever it is you're going through. And I encourage you to keep on believing, keep on trusting, keep on walking by faith and not by sight, believing God for your breakthrough, for he may not answer you subtly, but I do believe he will answer you eventually. I pray that you had a wonderful and blessed and safe day. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to a very familiar passage of scripture, and that is found in Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Starting with the 14th verse, Mark chapter 4, going through 14 to 20, and it reads, The sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Verse 16, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure for a, while, for a time or for a while. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this word, of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter in, entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And verse 20, and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. My brothers and sisters, family and friends, for this Tuesday night session of developing unwavering faith. Uh, usually this passage of scripture is used when dealing with our everyday lives as far as walking with the Lord, as far as receiving the word, walking by it, using it, and applying it to our lives, as far as how we govern our lives, as far as maybe uh, uh, not falling into sin, and that's how it's usually preached on. And I don't think it's ever been preached on this way, but I'm going to use it for developing unwavering faith in the message of unwavering faith. And the title of my message this evening would be, what is the condition of your heart towards mm. faith? What is the condition of your heart towards faith? And as a side note, the condition of your heart will determine the condition of your faith. My brothers, sisters, family, friends, we are told in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, to walk by faith and not by sight. We're also told in Habakkuk 2, 4, Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3, 11, and Hebrews 38. The just shall live by faith, or add this to it, the just, which just means the righteousness, the righteous of Christ, the righteous shall live by faith. My brothers and sisters, and friends, all who name Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, as well as all who will receive Jesus Christ in their lives, must learn then to live and walk by faith, developing their own personal walk with the Lord with a faith attitude, a faith mentality, 
and a faith mindset. The success or non-success of living out your Christian journey will be determined by the condition of your heart, spirit, and mental attitude towards walking and living by faith. Though we all may be Christians, serving the Lord with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, we are all at different levels of faith, or the condition of our hearts toward faith are not the same. And so with this message, I am asking you, what is the condition of your heart towards faith? In our text, my brothers, sisters, family, and friends, Mark and Mark 4, starting with the first verse, 1 to 13, I didn't read that, didn't need to, Jesus is teaching his disciples by way of a parable, the sower souls the word. And when Jesus finishes telling them the parable, the disciples then ask Jesus to explain the parable to them. And with Jesus' reaction and response of asking him, if you don't understand this parable, how will you understand all parables? Jesus then begins explaining the parable by saying, the sower sows the word. He does so by explaining the four ground conditions of man's heart, which can be hard, stony, full of thorns, or on good ground. The sower in this parable is God. And the seeds that, are, that, the, that is being sown is the word of God. Okay, so hard ground heart. Verse 14 and 15. The sower sows so with the word. And these are they by the wayside. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. My brothers and sisters, and friends, there are those who have a hard-hearted ground heart. Meaning, for when it comes to having faith in God, they heard the word of faith, they uh, preached on, taught on, and even read from uh, about faith in God's word. But because their heart is so hard and because they feel their challenges are so difficult, they have a hard time believing God can bring them through their unpleasant challenges and or their challenges around turn around in their favor. And because of their unpleasant past experiences and the unpleasant experiences of others that did not turn out well in their favor, their heart is is or has become hard towards God's word on having faith in him. And because they don't understand or don't receive the message of faith, their heart has grown toward, hard towards God and his word. That whenever they hear the word of faith or about having faith in God, Satan then comes immediately and takes away the word they are hearing. Therefore, the word of faith cannot penetrate their hard heart. For them, instead of faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God, as Romans seven, uh, Romans 10, 17 tells us, doubt and unbelief comes by what they are seeing, hearing from the devil and from all the naysayers. And therefore, the word of faith cannot penetrate their hard heart towards having faith in God. And then, my brothers and sisters, friends, there's the stony ground heart, verse 16 and 17. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. My brothers and sisters, family and friends, there are those who have a stony ground heart. For when it comes to having faith in God, they heard the word of faith preached on and taught on and even read about faith in God's word. They receive God's word on faith with gladness and with excitement. 
believing and, and receiving and, and confessing and acting on God's word. But because the word of God or the word of faith did not get deeply planted or rooted into their hearts, they only endure while things were going well with them. But afterwards, when trials and afflictions or persecutions come or, or attack them for, for the word that has been planted in their hearts, they, they are immediately or they immediately get offended and begin backing off from continuing believing God for what they are believing him for, to bring the past or to turn around in their favor. And so because they got offended, their faith has been hindered from receiving what God had for them and their prayers were not answered. We now have the thorny, thorny ground part, verses 18 and 19. And these are they which are sown among thorns such as hear the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter in and choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. My brothers and family and friends, there are those mm -hmm, who have a thorny ground heart. But when it comes to having faith in God, they heard the word of faith preached on and taught on and even read about faith in God's word. Though they hear the word on faith, it does not work for them. Why? Because even though they are doing all that is required to walking by faith and not by sight, they allow the cares of the world and or all their cares or negative challenges that are happening in their lives to hinder their faith. And because they allow the deceitfulness of others who, for example, who told them that God doesn't heal everybody mm -hmm, or that God may not, not heal you on this side, but he will heal you on the other side and that God gets glory. Check this out. That God gets glory from you being sick. And because of the lust of other things, which is listening to all the naysayers and and, and basing their faith more on what the doctor has told them and, and, and in what the negative circumstances are telling them and showing them, these thorns, this type of attitude has choked the word or the message of faith in their hearts and it becomes unfruitful for them. And so the word of faith does not produce in their lives for them. And then last but not least, my brothers and family friends, so we had the heart hearted ground heart, we had the stony ground heart, and we've discussed the thorny ground heart. And now we have the good ground heart found in verse 20, which says, and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30 fold, some 60 and some 100. My brothers and sisters, family and friends, there are those who have good ground heart. For when it comes to having faith in God, they heard the word of faith preached on and taught on and even read about faith in God's word. However, the difference from the other grounds, they run with it by believing, receiving, confessing, and acting on God's word on faith without doubting or wavering. Their faith in God and his word produces for them. Not that, the, not that they don't have any troubles or struggles, but they just take God at his word and they run with it. And therefore their faith in God and his word is producing for them of what they have asked and, and were believing God for come to pass for them. Some 30, mm -hmm, some 60, some a hundredfold time, and time and time again. So I ask you, my brothers and sisters, my friends, what is the condition of your heart towards faith? Is it hard? Mm. Is it stony? Is it full of thorns? Or is it, and I pray that it is, on good ground? I pray it is the latter that is on good ground. For it is when the seeds, the word of for the word or message of faith falls on good ground heart, that it will become fruitful, 
producing what we are asking God to produce or bring to pass in our lives. My brothers and friends, what is the condition of your heart towards faith? I pray that when you hear the word on faith, that you just don't hear it, that, that you actually act on it, that you are developing unwavering faith, is which our Tuesday night session is all about, that we all learn to develop our faith each and every single day. And as I said to you in previous times before, life gives us plenty of opportunities to practice developing unwavering faith. And I pray that when you hear the word of God, period, for any subject, but in this case, developing unwavering faith, I pray that when you hear the message of faith, as Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I like to say it this way, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing over and over and over again and hearing by the word of God. Our faith does not develop. Our faith does not get strong and grow from just hearing the word of God on faith one time. We got to keep hearing it over and over again. And I pray that when you hear the word of God, that it falls on good ground to where when you were praying and when you're believing God and standing and confessing, confessing his word and acting on his word, that your prayers are being answered some 30, mm -hmm, some 60, and some 100 for time and time and time again, that God is showing himself big time in your life, that he is backing his word, that he is honoring and rewarding your faith. And as I said earlier, and I, uh, you know, other times, and even mentioned it in Sunday school, we are all responsible for our own relationship with our, with the Lord. And we're all responsible to develop our own personal relationship as far as walking by faith and not by sight and listening to him and him only and his word and trusting him to get you through whatever you're going through and tuning out all the naysayers and tuning out all the negativity that's around you that the, that Satan is trying to bring you away and that you ignore all the uh, prosper, uh, persecutions and trials and tribulations that he tried to throw you away that you do not caught up in that and get and keep your eyes on those circumstances even though it's easier said and done for the very reason, as Mark 4, 17 says, he sends the trials and persecutions and, and, and um, tribulations your way for the very word sake. He's trying to get that word of faith out of your heart so that you will start doubting and, and, and wavering about what God is going to do for you. And he mainly does it when it seems like it's taking a while for things to come your way. It takes, it's taking a while when God is uh, delaying uh, his answer to you. That's the time where you really got to dig in and continue to walk by faith, not by sight. Continue to confess what you believe. Continue to believe it. Continue to receive it. No matter what is going on, no matter how long it's taking, continue to walk by faith and not by sight. My brothers and fine friends, what is the, the, the condition of your heart towards faith? I pray that is on good ground. Let us pray. Our Father God, thank you for this time. I thank you for this, another opportunity to bring forth your word. I pray again, as always, that this word has touched, blessed, encouraged, and is uplifting those who have heard it, those who are at Zion and their families and the guests on the line and their families, whether now or even when they hear it later, that wherever they hear it, that they will be blessed by it, encouraged and uplifted. They will be able to use it and apply it to their lives to, to re constantly receive your word, receive it, to receive it, and then believe on it and act on it and trust it and, 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 to, and continue to check out the word of God for themselves to understand and study that we are to walk by faith and not by sight, that the just, those who are righteous, are to live by faith. And anything not of faith is sin. And it's impossible to please him uh, without faith, it's impossible to believe him, to please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seeks him. And Hebrews 11 6 says, So, Father, we're asking you again to just touch and bless all those on the line. Again, I pray this word has blessed them, has encouraged them, touch them, bless them, encourage them, uplift them, work it out for them as they're working it out, wherever their, their problems are, wherever their trials are, wherever they're going through, that by faith, by faith, by faith, they trust you to bring them through and to turn the situation around in their favor. We ask again, as always, to continue to touch and bless our pastor and his family and all the Zionites and their family and all of, and the guests online and their family. You know what each and every person is standing in need of. We claim healing over each and every one right now. 
by faith, by your stripes, they are and were healed in the name of Jesus. Help us help all agree with that and stand on that no matter what the doctor says, no matter what they're going through, though it may be easier said than done to continue to stand, having done all to stand and believing them, believing you for their healing. And I'm going to ask that you touch and bless those who are going through bereavement right now in Jesus' name. And of course, Lord, we ask again, as, you, as, as I, we were prayed earlier, that you continue to bless and touch the Washington family as they're now in bereavement, as Sister uh, Kayla has gone on to be with the Lord this morning. So we ask that you just touch and bless them and encourage them, uplift them while they're going through. And we know that you will see them through. Let them know that you're with them, that you never leave them or forsake them, that they're very, they're very present help in time of need and trouble, and even during this time of bereavement. We thank you. We praise you. We give your name all the honor, glory, and praise for it. In Jesus', in Jesus name we pray. And by faith, we claim it done. Amen. Amen, amen. And remember, saints, all things are possible to him, to her, to those of them that believe. Why? Because there's absolutely positively nothing too hard for Lord. Never stop praying, never stop believing, and never, ever give up. Why? Because your healing and your miracle and your deliverance is on its way as long as you don't stop praying and never, never, never give up. And remember, what is the condition of your heart towards faith? And I pray that it is on good ground. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for coming on. And I, I'll talk to you next time. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thanks, Brother Dickerson. God bless everybody on the prayer line. We'll see you in Amen. the morning with Dr. J to start your day at 8 a.m. God bless you now. Good God night, bless everyone. God, God bless. For that word, um, SJ. You got it. God bless you, LJ. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you guys. And thank you for that prayer. Just bless a, you. Um, all right, now. See you tomorrow. All right. Let's just live on. Walk with the king and be a blessing. Yes. Amen. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Brother Dickinson. God bless. Right. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Night, God bless. Reverend Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless. Encourage. Darling. Yep. Oh, yes. Oh, Reverend Dickinson. No, he just left. Pastor. He just missed him. Yep. Oh, Pastor. Oh. He oh. my sister Law had a, a testimony. Mm. We'll catch, we'll, we'll catch him. I did. But she has a testimony for you. Okay. Sorry. Who, who, um, what is your name? I'm sorry. Pastor Flores. Yeah, this is, this is Pastor Flores right here. That's our pastor. Pastor Flores. Hi, my name is Darlene. And I, um, I, Reverend Dickerson, I I had a testimony. Um, Let me see if I can get him back uh, on the line. October the eighth. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can get him back on the line. Uh, no problem. Let's see. Can you sign back into prayer? To prayer line. Mm. Okay, let's see if he can get back in. He usually walks away from his computer, so he might not be able to get us back. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Pastor Flores, I'm going to tell you my testimony. Okay. I was well, I took October the eighth. I was diagnosed with um, a mass on my right lung. And um, at that time, sometime around that time, I, you know, I had testified to Dr. Um, Doctor, to uh, uh, Reverend Dickerson, mm -hmm. and he told me to just, you know, I've always prayed, and you know, I always have kept my faith, and mm -hmm. he just told me to keep my faith, and he said, no matter what the doctors say, even if it's bad, just keep my faith, That's and right. as long as I believe in my heart. I will, God would take care of it. And he mm -hmm. did. Now, March 13th, I started, I started, um, chemo and, um, radiation. And mm -hmm. I finished my, I had six weeks of, uh, both, uh, April the 18th, I completed my, um, treatment. Mm -hmm. So last week I had, I had my, um, CAT scan, uh, to see what the chemo and the, um, 
radiation did. Yesterday, I went back to the doctor, and they did what it was supposed to do. And I know uh, that it was nobody but God. Oh, that's wonderful. I, and I, I just want, I just want that's to so share great. that. Thank you, Lord. And um, I'm, I'm just got to go through um, um, immunotherapy now for a year. Right, I take it once a uh, once a month for a year, and that's okay. Any that's lingering cancer cells? Yeah. No, any lingering cancer cells? It's supposed to take care of it. And I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Yeah, nobody thank but the Lord. Lord. Amen. Nobody uh, but Jesus. Yeah. That's right. And, I, and another another thing, I I wanted to um, reach out. My brother just had a heart attack the first of April, and he's doing fantastic. We kept him up in oh, prayer, good. and he's doing good. good. But he had a hard struggle in the beginning. But I just want to say, I just want to thank the Lord for that. And I, his name is Ron, Ronald Rose, and I just would Amen. like you to pray for him also. Amen. You know, and I Dickens thank you. Just signing back in now. Brother Dickerson? Uh, Can you unmute, Brother Dickerson? I'm sorry? Uh, uh, Reverend Dickerson's back in the room. I had texted him to try to come back in, so I will see if he can unmute his line. And there he is. All right. Can you unmute? All right. There you go. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. I don't know. Yeah. So this, this I, woman here. I, I, go, go, watch, go ahead and tell mm. him again. Go ahead. Hi, uh, Reverend Dickerson. This is Darlene, Darlene Hi. Brooks. And I I spoke to you a c couple of times. I would, had been on the prayer line. And one thing you told me, uh, I'm, I'm a young lady that had the mask on her lung. I, I'm sure you deal with plenty of, um, yes, hear plenty of testimonies. And, all. But, and you, I'm sorry? I remember. Yes, my sister-in-law, yeah. Yeah, I'm Kia's sister-in-law. Yes. Um, I remember you telling me that um, no matter what the doctor says, I told you that I had to go have a cat. I would be finished my treatment on the 18th of, um, of April. And you said no matter what, you know, the doctor says, mm -hmm. still staying safe. Yes. And, I, you know, that's, that really stuck with me. And um, I always kept my faith, but that's what you said and how you said it, it really stuck with me. So um, I finished my treatment on the 18th of April, mm -hmm. and I had my CAT scan done last week. And um, I went to the doctors yesterday, and he told me what the CAT scan and my, um, oh God, I can't even talk. The CAT scan and my um, radiation did, it did what it was supposed to do. And I just want to say hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I just have to, you know, I, I just have to go for immunotherapy once um, once a month for a year. Okay. Uh, that's to kill any lingering uh, cancer cells. But I kept that thought in my mind. What, if I got bad news or good news, if, if it's bad, just continue to have the faith, and which I did. And I thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. God bless you for that testimony. Praise the Lord. You're cancer free. Oh, hallelujah. We give God all the honor to him. Praise the Lord. We thank you. We praise you. This is darling. We thank you, Lord. Lord we, 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 we pray. We pray. We stand in faith. And now we thank you for rewarding Sister Darling's faith. We thank you for your submission. We thank you for your stand in faith. We thank you for that she believed the word. We thank you that she believed for herself. And Lord, look what you have done. You have rewarded her faith and we thank you for it. And now, Lord, we're believing for her right now in, in the future that when she continues to go for these doctors appointments this year, they will continue to see nothing. They will not come back. We take authority over it. We still find it. We still curse it. We yeah. her Jesus and help her continue yeah. to confess her healing, continue to believe for her healing, and continue to stand in faith. Yeah. Thank you all now. Jesus, Peter, we are thanking you for it, and we give your name. Yonder, glory, glory, and praise for And thank you that she thought it not robbery of her time to get on this line and give a testimony yes. about your goodness, about your grace, and yes. about your mercy. Thank yes. you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. you. thank you for calling me. Yeah, you. No, make my night now. God bless you. God bless you. God is good. Oh, God bless you. Yes, he is all the time. Thank you so much. Um, and I need to come I, I need to come and hear the word. I don't know exactly. I know you're in Amblin. Yes, we are. Our church is, yes. 14 North Street, Amblin. Uh, Okay, what what is the address? Here, you can give it to me. Yes, I can. Yep. Okay, okay. All right. Love you, love you, guys. Have a blessed night. All, All right, now. thank have a good you. Good night, everybody. Thank you for that. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Brother Dixon, God, have a good night, man. God bless you too. See you. You as well. Again, God bless. <laughs>